Thanks everyone for coming along for our uh, brief presentation on Transform Online Learning at Charles Sturt University, also known as TOL. So uh, I'm going to give you a quick uh, rundown of the background of TOL before handing over to Karen to, to give you a demo uh, of a transformed uh, subject. So um, my name is Jason Howitz. So I'm the sub-dean of TOL. I'm working closely with a number of people uh, in this initiative, including uh, Dr. Jay Cohen, who's the Director of Online Learning at Charles Sturt, to, to um, initiate and implement this project at Charles Sturt University, which I've got to say at this stage is, is a proof of concept. So we're, we're focusing on um, a number of subjects and courses um, with the likelihood that it will be uh, wheeled out more broadly at CSU pending an evaluation. But we are you know, very impressed with our early results. So um, as the name suggests, we are about enhancing uh, our online subjects, their interactivity, the way they engage people, the value for money that people get. And in terms of the drivers for this project, um, one of the huge drivers for CSU, as you can see, there is the huge growth in the online education market. Now, this is not just in Australia, this is worldwide. And you can see there, since 2010, we've seen around about a 72% increase in Australia. Uh, of students enrolling in online subjects and courses. Now, a number of reasons for that. Um, they're obviously more convenient. There's also a huge growth in the postgraduate education sector where people are juggling uh, work and study and online obviously makes sense in that, in that context. Plus there's the whole uh, digital uh, revolution that's going on and certainly education is not exempt from that. So you might think that given that huge growth, uh, CSU as a leading uh, provider of, of distance or online learning um, is going to get a fair swag of that ourselves. But um, of course, th there's also a lot of players in the market and increasingly a lot of other institutions entering the market. So competition is good for consumers, but for us to reign retain our, our market lead in that online space, really important that we innovate. So we are a leader in online, but we know that unless we sort of move to the next level and become, you know, really brilliant at what we're offering, um, then our market share is likely to decrease. And we don't want to lose our mantle of the leading online provider of education in Australia. The other big driver is, of course, it's not just getting students through the door, it's retaining them, it's engaging them, it's delivering a really good quality product. We know that online learning, there is a lot of uh, dropouts across um, all forms of online learning. So it's really important that we retain our students. So um, they're two of the big drivers for why we implemented TOL. In terms of what we've done so far, we've pulled together a crack team of learning designers, online editors, digital technologists. We have a director of online learning, Dr. Jay Cohen, who's a real visionary uh, in this space. A absolutely uh, great, great guy and knows what he's talking about and that has that rare ability to not just um, envision of what great online learning should be, but how to implement it. So he's leading these teams uh, that work with the academics for the subjects concerned to enhance enhance um, you know, the learning, um, the, 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 their overall quality. So um, in terms of what we do, um, it, it's basically three tiered. We, we start with a, a set of toll requirements. Every subject is expected to implement a certain level of interactivity, of consistency, of quality. But we also look at learning analytics. We live in the age of big data and we want to know from past offerings of subjects what students struggle with, what students are not happy with. So with those um, requirements and the learning analytics we receive, we seek to uh, basically build a scope plan for each of the subjects that we work on in order to design a better subject. And then we implement it using a sprint based approach. So that would resonate with you guys in a project management context. Um, our sprints are four weeks long. Uh, within each sprint, we assign uh, a team to work on one subject. At the end of the sprint, we review what happened, what went well, what needs to be improved. But we also do a product review where we QA the subject before we release it out to students. So what we're getting out of this is, is really high quality, innovative subjects. To give an example of the kinds of enhancements before I pass to Karen, one is consistency. Consistency of look and feel, of usability, 
um, of overall quality. We have an editor QA, extensively QA everything before it goes out the door. And that may seem a no brainer, but if you've ever done online learning before, um, I can give lots of examples um, with other institutions um, that, um, you know, the, 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 the end product was not, was not up to standard. But uh, we QA everything that's going out the door in terms of our whole project. Consistency is a huge factor, but also interactivity, teacher presence. So we embed things like podcasts. We have innovative tools like Video Hop, where we deliver lectures that also are searchable, have transcripts. Um, so not these tools aren't used in every subject. So I don't want to give the impression that every subject is using every single tool mentioned here. They will vary, but we are aiming at this level of interactivity and quality. Every uh, topic we have has interactive tests, things such as note taking tools embedded into the modules. The modules themselves contain uh, ample readings, often eBooks, uh, which you don't have to purchase. We link directly out to those great content and not superfluous content. So we're not asking people to just read stuff without it having any connection to the subject. So we're really trying to tighten up on what people need to know in their modules. We're also piloting across a number of subjects, a tool called assist, um, which allows students in, in selected subjects to actually book in assessments dates within designated windows. And basically within certain windows, such as the green window, you can see there on the screen with the green dots, students might submit any time during that period. Or in the yellow window, they might book their assessment for submission during that period. So we are trying uh, lots of different technologies to make study easier for students and naturally higher quality in terms of what we're offering. So look, that's enough for me. I want to pass to Karen now because she can put this into context uh, by showing you a subject that has actually uh, undertaken uh, the toll treatment. So Karen, I'll pass to you. Wonderful. Thank you, Jason. I'm just trying to uh, find my video there. There I am. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Thanks for joining us. Um, my role at uh, IT Masters is that of subject mentor. So one of the things that I do is um, conduct the weekly webinars with, uh, with the student group. Uh, my, my role is also to check discussion forums and basically guide and facilitate the learning of the content of the subject uh, to anyone who's enrolled. So I've been working with MGI 5.11 now for a few years and uh, the old version of MGI 11 before it underwent its transformation uh, as a result of the project that uh, Jason just referred to earlier. So it's now a much more interactive subject, uh, a, a better quality subject, and I believe a much more enjoyable subject for students as well. If you're going to do any postgraduate uh, project management study, it's one of the first subjects that you will do, if not the first subject that you'll do. So oftentimes students who are coming into my MGI 511 group have no prior postgraduate um, study experience. And one of the things that, and I've studied online myself and, and from what Jason's saying there about the growth in online study, one of the things I've struggled with uh, as an online student myself is the engagement uh, and keeping up uh, and, and having the discipline myself to be able to ensure that I keep up and, and keep moving with things. So we do lots of different things in the subject to make sure uh, that you know what's expected of you and that you're guided and, and assisted in the subject. And one of those things is the weekly webinars. So we get together once a week. Um, it's usually a week night um, around about 8 p.m. or 7 p.m. Uh, and we go through a weekly webinar. So that's really the cornerstone of the subject in terms of interaction uh, with your subject mentor. But in addition to that, we have uh, this wonderful Interact 2 site. So I'm just going to share my desktop uh, now with you. And hopefully this will, um, this will work. Sorry. So by now you should be able to see my screen. Can everybody see my screen there now with um, with the Welcome to MGI 511 Project Management Fundamentals on it? Is that coming through? Wonderful, excellent. So um, this is our Interact 2 site. Uh, this is where you will come um, through the week to, and on the weekends sometimes if you're super dedicated, uh, to uh, go through your MGI 511 content. Uh, so what the first thing I want to do is just play uh, the welcome uh, to the subject video for you, just to give you a bit of insight into what uh, MGI 511 is all about. But basically, just before I do that, it, it's a fundamental subject, so you're not expected to have any prior experience in project management, and you're not expected to have studied project management before. It really is uh, industry-based, ground-up stuff. So I'm just going to play that for you at the moment.
I'll just enlarge that for you as well. I don't think we get sound. Oh, we're not getting sound. Okay. All right. That's not good then. Okay. <laughs> it's all right. You can imagine it with sound. <laughs> I imagine it with sound. Have voice before? All right. Um, so basically what it is is an introduction uh, video then. I won't play it if there's no sound because that won't work. Um, but it just introduces you to the subject and lets you know uh, about uh, what, what the fact that it is a fundamental subject and what, that is, um, what that's all about. Um, the other things on Interact 2 that I, that I just wanted to, to show you basically um, on all of our sites, we have a, our subject outline which is um, um, useful information. But the other thing we have is, oh, what is happening there, Chantelle? I'm not, not sure why I'm being asked to log back in. Sorry, everyone. That might be because I'm sharing my desktop, perhaps. Um, but one of the things that we do um, that we do is we get evaluations done twice in the subject um, throughout the session. So at the mid-session break, or just before the mid-session break, we send out a very short survey to students just to ask you what you think about the subject so far, how you're going with the webinars online. Uh, we record the webinars as well. So if you don't happen to be able to make it to the webinar for, for one reason or another, you can catch the recordings and we also share the slides with you as well uh, for the webinars. Um, but we just ask you about how you're going with the subject and what you're enjoying what you're not enjoying and then that gives us an opportunity to tweak or change anything that needs to change to improve your experience of the subject in the back half and then at the end of the session you also are asked to complete an end of session survey as well so that gives us feedback on the whole session uh, with the uh, the opportunity that you've had to to go through the whole entire session and tell us what you've liked and what you didn't like um, one of the things that we do have as well are discussion forums. So this one is uh, for my current session that's running at the moment. So people have the opportunity to ask questions about the assessment, but we also have, uh, which is something new this session as a result of the, the toll project that we've done, topic forums as well. So these are the opportunity for each, um, for, for students to go in each week uh, and discuss the topic with them, their, their, their fellow students and also with me, uh, ask questions about some of the learning content that they've been through uh, and what they've enjoyed about it. Sometimes I'll pose a question there. Uh, so some weeks there might be a question for, uh, for people to answer and then in other weeks there, you know, there might just be just general discussion happening in those forums. So they're a great place to go to and that helps with the engagement and making you feel as though you're not alone as well in all of that. Um, so our online meetings, uh, so as I mentioned, we have a webinar once a week. So we're at uh, week five uh, coming up this week and uh, our webinar is on Wednesday night for this particular subject at seven o'clock. Um, but at the end of each webinar, I pop the slides up here and also a recording link uh, to the webinar for that week. So as I said before, if you happen to miss the webinar, uh, then you can come in here and, and watch that recording and you can also send me any questions. We also put uh, some resources up here for you. So we've got some pre-recorded audio lectures and uh, a case study there as we go through as well. You can also come in here and see information about your assessments. But the main thing I wanted to show you is just how uh, the subject uh, looks for you in terms of content each week. So we have 10 topics and each of these topics is based on a knowledge area of project management from the, uh, the project management body of knowledge. So the subject is based on that um, Project Management Institute um, method and it covers all uh, different methodologies as well, but that's the foundation. So coming in here to introduction to uh, the PMBOK, this is our, our very first topic. Uh, PMBOK is our um, prescribed text uh, for this subject and you'll see in here you've got your readings uh, and as I scroll down, you've got some things that you can listen to, some podcasts and things. Uh, just to make that a little bit more interesting. Uh, there's some interactive diagrams on some of these topics as well. And there's some activities. Now, the great thing about the activities in this subject is that all of the activities help you build up to your final assessment. So I know with a lot of subjects that, um, that I've done in the past online with different places that I've studied, uh, you know, you have an assessment at the end, but you've got to kind of connect the dots yourself and, and get to the end and then uh, do, your, uh, do your assessment. This subject aims to prepare you for the assessment right from week one. So as we go through each week, there are different activities that you can do. So for example, this one says the series of phases that a project passes through from its start to its completion is a project stage, the project life cycle, 
project management processes or a phase gate. So if I click on there, the project life cycle, it tells me that I've got that question right. So you can use this as an opportunity to test your knowledge at every opportunity um, that you get at, each, at the end of each week. So if there's things there that you might get wrong, just say for example, the process is required to establish the scope and refine the objectives. Let's just say for example, I think that that's monitoring and controlling. I'll click on that and it will tell me that I've gotten that wrong and that indeed the answer was planning. So I know where I'm going wrong with the subject. I know the things that I need to brush up on and I know the things that I need to fix uh, before I move on to the next, uh, the next topic. So all of our topics are like this. Uh, they all have uh, a range of different activities in them. Sometimes it might be mix and match answers. Sometimes it might be a little quiz like that one. Um, but there's always readings, there's always pre-recorded audio, uh, there's uh, lots of opportunities to watch videos and here's another activity, um, which of the following is not a component of the project charter. So I can say in here, oh, let's just say, uh, I think it might be assigned to the project manager and I'll click on that. It will tell me if I'm, if I'm right or wrong at the end of that quiz. Uh, so uh, I can go through all of this and uh, and then at the end, so here's one where we drag and drop the correct term to its corresponding definition. So we just choose something from the list and then and then drag it across. So um, you know this is this is quite useful um, because it allows us to determine where we we might need to uh, to brush up on certain aspects of the information. Um, some questions there. Um, so Jason has asked, would you normally go in sequence um, with, with the topic? So yes, so week one, we do topic one and we have a webinar for topic one. And then week two, we move on and we do the second topic and so on. So um, people can obviously move ahead though at their own pace. So the weekly webinar is scheduled on that Wednesday evening. We have the mid-session break, which gives students a week or two off uh, in the middle. And most students are using that to either catch up or to, um, to just do a bit of a revision anyway. Um, but we are supposed to go in the, in the order of the topics. But that said, if people feel that there's something coming up that they want to skip ahead to, they can always do that. And then, um, or if there's something that they, they need to have a break for a couple of weeks, they can do that and then use their time to, to catch up as they wish. Um, so then we've also got some assessments in here. Um, this one, this particular subject has four assessments. Uh, we have a blog post and a reply that you're required to do, a position paper, and then at the very end, uh, your project management plan that you will submit. Uh, but as I mentioned before, as you're working through the topics each week, you're doing activities that are related to that final assessment. So some of the things that you're building on and, and doing as you go are things that uh, you can use to, you have to do obviously a little bit more work, but they're things pardon me, that you can move on and, and continue on with and keep working on with uh, to be able to, um, to submit your assessment at the end. So that was really it from me, uh, unless there's any specific questions uh, about the, uh, the subject content. I'll just double check the chat box and see if there's anything there, Chantelle, or is there anything else yeah. you'd like me to cover? I don't think so. Um, thank you very much for your um, your time today, Jason and Karen. And if anyone does have any questions uh, and you can get them into the chat box in the next few minutes, I'm sure Karen and Jason would be happy to answer it for you. Um, otherwise, send us through an email and obviously we'll be happy to answer. Uh, yeah, any questions from the audience or any further comments, Jason? No, nothing from me. I mean, if people are are keen to learn anything more about uh, the toll projects and some of the innovations we're engaging with, you can send me an email, uh, jhoweth at csu.edu.au. And obviously, if you have an IT master's uh, question, if you're looking to enrol in a course, perhaps you can send me the email or uh, you can send uh, an email to IT masters. I think that is IT masters at, at edu.au, Chantel. Yep, uh, so there's admin at itmasters.edu.au, which is a great one to um, send any questions to. David had asked, any comment to mobile demographic and device browser compatibility? Do you know that off the top of your head, Jason? Uh, yeah, we are looking, certainly one of our key design requirements is um, to uh, test on multiple uh, mobile platforms. So yeah, m mobile compatibility is absolutely uh, a key requirement for all of our designs. And we, we adhere to a set of uh, mobile um, compatibility standards to achieve that. Toll is being done um, 
it's, it's been done unit by unit, but it's clustered around courses. Now at the moment, you know, our toll team is, is fairly small. Um, we are focusing on courses in the bachelor, sorry, in the, in the faculty of, of business. Now that includes a number of postgraduate IT courses, um, MBA, um, uh, we have a course in psychology, uh, courses in law, in cyber security. Um, this subject here, which features in, I think, nearly all of the IT master's programs. Um, so we are, we are trying to cluster development by course. Um, at the moment, we've, we've tollified our verb that we, we use for, for this is tollify. We've tollified around about uh, 60 subjects. Um, and, um, uh, you know, we are, we are a proof of concept uh, project at the moment, but it, it is going to undergo evaluation shortly and is, uh, I, I'm hopeful, uh, going to be uh, wheeled out much more broadly across the university. So, um, uh, subject by subject, um, we're, we're doing more, um, but we're not yet sort of pervasive in terms of the number of subjects we've done across the entire university. Now, someone, Chantel, wants the link for the cybersecurity course, that's Lachlan. Um, maybe you could uh, type that one in. Yep, um, we can send that. We'll send uh, some links to the courses with this video when we send it out, uh, as long as, as well as any information that we said we would include. It's approaching one o'clock and we said this would be a half hour webinar. So I think it's time to um, start winding up. Again, any questions, send them through to us and we will obviously answer them as best we can. And uh, again, thank you for your time, Karen and Jason. My pleasure. Thanks, Chantal. Thank Thanks, you. Everyone. Thanks, everyone. All right. Bye, all.